Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we'll get started. Um, this is uh, uh, the regularly scheduled uh, July meeting for the, uh, the Finance Committee for the town, but we uh, decided to repurpose it, and this is a joint workshop uh, of the Finance Committees uh, for the town as well as the school board. Uh, so the format is very informal, uh, and I think we were, this will, we thought this would be more of a discussion as opposed to a presentation, uh, and uh, a way for us to look back on um, what was accomplished in uh, the past budget cycle, and uh, to try to think through what what worked and, uh, and what we'd like to continue, and what we'd like to stop, and uh, some of the things we might try to do differently next round. So. Um, I don't know if there are any questions. I thought we'd go around at least just do introductions so everybody knows, you know, who everyone is. So Don Hamill, chair of the Town Finance Committee. Um, Peter Hayes, chair of the council. Glad we're doing this. First time ever we've done a summer sort of pre-planning of the budget. It's a great thing. Great we look idea. better Thank on you. camera when we're tan in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> all future meetings are happening in the summer. Yeah. Everybody's smiling. It's all good. Uh, Katie Foley, Town Council. John Clutchy, Town Council. Tom Hall, town manager. Kate Bolton, business manager for the school department. Paul Johnson, town council. April Sider, school board. Sarah Layton, school board. <clears throat> Larissa Crockett, assistant town manager. Ruth Porter, finance director. Gina Kluke, the deputy finance director. Okay. Great. Thanks, everyone. And we will have an opportunity for public comment uh, before we wrap things up. So, uh, Steve. Steve, <laughs> do you, <laughs> Steve, do you have a copy of what we're looking at? If not, John, do you mind just handing him? Thank you. So, uh, with that, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, a handout, and we also have some slides. Um, happy to to have anyone lead off in terms of the discussion, uh, beginning with uh, you know what went well, you know, starting with the positives. What have we think went well in the past round of? Uh, Hey, so, Don, maybe we'll just do a little bit brief introduction from our end, because as you guys can see, we've, we really have, um, have gone through this debrief process as a school board finance committee. So last Wednesday, April, Alicia, and Kate and I all met, um, and we followed the start, stop, continue format. So um, a lot of what you'll see on here for the majority of it is very specific to the school budget development process, um, but there are some takeaways in there that I think are relevant for the work that we do with you guys, um, with the council, as a, as a joint committee as well. Um, so that's just some background as to where this came from, and I think, you know, we'll pull out the highlights to share with you, but really interested um, to hear what you guys have to say and, as well. So how'd you like to do this? You want to do it randomly, or you want to, rather than we kind of do, uh, you know, uh, one at a time? Um, so my recommendation, and anyone's free to disagree, and how I've seen it work in the past, is we just keep it by category. So we choose a, a start, or, <coughs> or sorry, a, a, you know, maybe start with a uh, what worked well that we want to continue, so the continue, and Great. then go start and stop after that. Great. That works. Slide. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, maybe a suggestion might be, I know each chair kind of solicited yep. feedback, and that's what we see in the slides, maybe just kind of a, some, a, each category a summary of what yep. was pulled out, as you say, and then that will be Great. a framework for additional conversation. And we comments. can add so. to it. Terrific. You want to do a coin toss? Or you know? <laughs> <laughs> Our you Yeah. Yeah. Sarah's going to win. I was going to say, Um... Okay, so cool. So if we start with the continue, um, so one thing that, and I'll I'll skip some again that, that are really just more specific to the school. Um, but the very first bullet I think is relevant for for everyone to hear. And uh, part of the budget development process um, from the school is that we have two half day sessions with the leadership council, um, and we're in you know the big room, and everyone's there, the entire school leadership. Um, and the entire school board, and it's really the first time that we're getting a copy of the full budget book. And each department head will go through, each department head and, and building leader will go through um, their budget. And it really gives us a good opportunity to understand what the needs are and what the priorities are for the year, um, but also to ask questions. And I think one of the takeaways that we had was we weren't really sure what our role was this year, being our first year, um, but now having gone through that, 
not only do we think it would potentially be valuable for it, definitely valuable for the board to do it, but we'd also like to see some participation from the council if you guys are interested, because you'll get no better opportunity to really truly understand the budget um, than that session and be able to ask questions to the people who are putting it together themselves. Do you recall like what month that took place in? I don't it's need a date. April. It was in April. The first so, of April. It was two it days. Was the same week as the first reading. Okay. No, that oh, was sorry, wrong. That's wrong. The, uh, the it presentation. Was recorded. Is it public? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, budget book, great. Want to continue doing that. Um, you know, one of the things that we uh, that came specifically from our chair was advocating for items of high value, so really fought for things that we wanted to keep in, um, which I think we did successfully this year. Um, one thing that Kate and Julie did this year, which is different, which I think was new, this was the first year they did it, was they ran, went around to each of the schools um, in, like, I want to say January. January time frame, and they met with teachers and staff, and just, it was a listening session, so they could just share. It was actually December, because it was right before the Christmas oh, you're right. break. You're right. And so they just listen to them. What, what's important to you? What are you concerned about? What did you have as a resource this year that worked really well? Um, and they cataloged all those notes, and then that again helped inform the budget cycle. So that's happening, you know, pretty early on when you think of the whole cycle. Um, we we didn't start doing this until later. Um, I think you guys do this as a default for all your meetings, but recording all the sessions and trying to have them down here. So we had the first of ours up in <coughs> upstairs. We want to continue to do them down here and make sure they're recording and, and made public. Um, and then one other thing that we did was, um, which I don't know if you guys do this and maybe something we can adopt as a group, is we created sort of a living document on Excel of all the questions that we received from uh, BOE members and the community members, and, and we have a log of all of that and then all the answers. So we would get questions that came in from different board members at different times, and, and kind of when Kate and Julie were able, they would go in and answer them. So we have that log, um, and it'll also be helpful, I think, from years moving forward, because realistically, you're getting asked a lot of the same questions year over year. So those are the big ones. Um, actually, and I think you guys, you might have a copy of the investment proposal. Um, hopefully you guys feel the same way, but we felt that this document that Kate and Julie created was one of the more valuable ones, and it basically just shows, I think you guys would have gotten a copy of this later on, um, but it basically just shows you know, what our level services are, and then essentially every, every investment there moving forward, and kind of where you draw that red line. So continue using this. Want anything to add? Kate, anything you want to add to that? Um, to call out for the continue? The only thing, the only wonder that I had about that piece, um, and it's something that sort of permeates the whole conversation, is that it only shows the school portion. What we tried to do was to um, be able to chunk out what an investment would do to the bottom line of the school's budget. Mm -hmm. But of course, we then always have to put, you know, an asterisk and say this doesn't mean the tax rate. This means the school's portion of the budget and, and the impact that we're having on, on that piece of it. So if there's a way that we can call that out more clearly, um, I don't know that people were confused by that. But I know in the past there's been some question about, you know, are we talking about the school's bottom line? Are we talking about the bottom line as a whole? So for this team, it's important to make sure we're saying that clearly. Sorry, I have a question. Your fourth bullet. I'm not sure if I heard you mention it. It's the same people on finance committee and communications. Yeah. So uh, April and I are both on the finance committee as well as the communications committee, which we found to be valuable, just in terms of making sure information is consistently shared. So not. So the, the suggestion is that uh, the the membership is the same, not that the same members. This past year should be the members next year. Right. Correct. Right. Okay. Correct. Right. Correct. That's That's right. We have found board specific. We found value in people who were also on finance being on communications, and so we'd like to see the overlap there, so. yep. mm -hmm. continue. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I also ended up attending quite a few of the communications meetings just because. You're right. That's that's what we're talking about, uh, a great deal of the time. So mm -hmm. that was really helpful.
you know, the other alternative to that would be having communications committee meet with finance committee, um, you know, if we didn't have that overlap because what we found as a board is, and I don't know if the town council has something, has similar obstacles, is uh, people tend to assume that communications committee knows what needs to be communicated. And if you're not on the finance committee and you're on communications, you're not necessarily, you know, aware week by week what needs to be being pushed out, you know, and especially because the school board does use social media and, you know, quick little gotcha grab kind of infographics and things so frequently. And we have Larissa. Right, and we do, and we do not. <laughs> so at the very least overlap, if not. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No. Right, it's okay, not three not. for three. Okay. So Sarah and I overlap, um, but Alicia is on finance and Hillary is on that communications. It did feel like you guys had a um, well thought out communications plan this year where you know, information was coming out, looked like in a well thought out way spaced um, entirely yeah yeah so uh, thank you could've... thank you thank you for that feedback so do we want questions on only question i had i mean i agree with your first bullet about attending the workshops is there any flexibility around scheduling and stuff because i mean so, for me right of in course. the middle of the business day becomes of course and so the the problem the obstacle, I shouldn't say problem, is mm. that because it's such a big group, yeah. I mean, it's 30 people, yeah. Yeah. Dis district employees, yeah. um, you know, that it really needs to be in the middle of the day. And not only that, it's two five-hour sessions. We did have so one. an insignificant. <clears throat> later. I think it started later, right? Yeah. The first one was in the morning, the second one was in the afternoon, or vice versa, but yeah. But, but for some of us that are trying to juggle career, and it's either start of the day or end of the day that bleeds over a little bit, right. a little easier. But if it is televised, it's also a way to Well, yeah, and if, we're, if we're able to record it and we make it clear that folks are able to access mm. that. Um, Historically, you've not recorded that one. Is that right? It was this year. I it, wouldn't, it was? It was. Okay, yeah, cool. we did do that. I wouldn't right. know. Yeah. We've been trying to sort of make use of the recordings when we can. Um, yeah, I, I hear you, Peter. I think you've actually been to that workshop in the uh, past. That's when I was actually when re retired. I know. Right? <laughs> and I, I actually had time. <laughs> when, you, I could actually, when you were pretending you weren't working. But I was pretending I wasn't working. Yeah. <laughs> but so, you're right. I mean, it's and it's something we can certainly talk so, about. So, for what it's worth, I just think, and, and for people to attend to, mm -hmm. just I know, I know you've got your constraints on it's sure. their day too. But if 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 it is possible to make that you know, that video readily available, let people know. I think that'd be helpful. That at least allow us to tap in when we can. At the very least, maybe just sending out a reminder after we've had it to those who weren't able yeah. to be there and say, hey, we did with this great thing. Spend yeah. a few minutes and, and with a link to the video. Yeah, Spend a few minutes. It's only <laughs> 10 hours. Yeah. So, any other comments or questions so far on the uh, on the continues for yeah, I just I would echo the the living doc document that yeah. the school board used. I attended a couple of the finance committees on their end, and it was incredibly helpful to. In fact, yeah. I had asked some questions, and somebody just said, "Oh, well, that question's been asked four times, and here's our living document." <laughs> um, so, it, the I think it would be a fantastic idea to combine those between the two entities and have that in one place. Yeah. Um, I think it's also good for members of the public that have specific questions for them to have a very specific place that it's getting answered. Um, and with Google Drive and our groups, I think um, it also allows the staff the flexibility of answering that when they have the time. So it, it's not necessarily an on the spot 30 second answer. They can actually formulate formulate something a little more thoughtful and keep it one place where, instead of just an individual email back to a constituent. So this was incredibly helpful for me as somebody that popped in and out on the finance committee. And one of the things we had discussed at our committee level was having a link to that document available on the budget portal. Yeah. Um, one of the things I thought of as the historian of this project, um, with a few of my friends here, uh, was that we did a lot of that kind of work when we did the budget forums a few years ago, um, where we made the commitment that we would create a document, and those documents for the years that we did that were, you know, maybe close to 20 pages of Q&A, and obviously not all of those questions are going to resonate today, but a lot of them do. A lot of the same things come up. 
um, year after year. So it was kind of in the back of my mind to maybe go back even and pull out some of the questions that we'd had in the past um, and add that in if we're creating some kind of an archive that people can use. Yeah, I, I, I would uh, you know, reinforce the point uh, folks have made about the need for us to have sort of a, uh, uh, an aligned process. I mean, I struggle trying to find out where, where each group was at various points, and you know, I'm supposed to be one of the you know more informed folks on the, on the whole thing. And I, so I, I, I was kind of hunting and chasing, and uh, and I think if that's something that we're able to take both committees through in unison and have better cadence on it, uh, it would also make us more effective connecting and communicating with the public. So, uh, and have it all in one spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the detail, I think people crave detail, and we've done it. We, as Kate mentioned, we've. You know, those answers and the questions were a pretty, you know, pretty good record, pretty detailed record. Uh, any other, any other thoughts uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, so far what uh, the school board has shared with us? And I, you know, our comments I think are not quite as detailed, and in some ways I think our process was. Um, um, was calendar driven and we came together in key meetings, but we didn't have the kind of the running flow like you described of, and the overlap with communications and finance that I thought, uh, you know, it's, it's clear that you had a, you know, really good thread and, uh, you know, and it was smooth moving through it. I, th I felt we had times where we were, you know, lurching from key meeting to key meeting and there were some stops and starts along the way. So, shall we go through the, the town side now? And, uh, and I kind of uh, restated the, uh, you know, the categories here. So, in our continues, we called what worked. Uh, and I thought I'd uh, you know, rely on Peter and, and Paul to help me with this. Uh, you know, ours, I think, a little bit, uh, a little bit higher level. Uh, but the first one was there seemed to be fairly good uh, um, Support for the, the fact that we had set a goal and achieved it. We set a goal at the outset and achieved it. Now, there's a lot of controversy around that in terms of how it unfolded, but uh, I think this season there was a feeling that we were, you know, we set a goal for 3%, and we said we were going to do it uh, prior to the impact of the reval, um, and, and we held to that. Um, and, uh, you know, we were driving parties uh, to try to um, make sure that the you know, that we executed on that. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get into kind of the flip side of that, but I think there was a, you know, good feeling that we had, you know, we were clear about it. And there was some continuity. There was fairly good continuity with with the focus on the mill rate. You know, it has its issues, but I think people, it was a familiar metric and one that has served the town pretty well over the past several years. So we'll see how it plays out once the, you know, the revaluations and all the assessments come through. But um, it was something that was familiar to people, even though there's still a fair amount of translation involved for the average citizen. So, uh, I don't know, Peter and Paul. Do you, yeah, that. do you want comment or on each bullet, or do you want to? However you like. Yeah, you know, we can go. We can <laughs> go deep on each. Yeah. <laughs> well, so the one thing I would say on that, and I agree with the first bullet, and yet I also know and recognize that there's ways to improve it. And for me, uh, a big piece of that is that we, and we intended to have a joint uh, team building, goal setting kind of workshop, but we didn't do that. This year, you guys, we put it in the budget for you guys for next year to do that, right? I'm 99% sure we did. Team building. Well, a, or a combined goal setting oh, so that sure. they would have, goal so setting, for example, yeah. the school board wasn't part of yeah. our conversations when we talked about not in, including the, uh, Reval, for example, that was just council, and right, um, it began around this table. I think in a joint finance committee right, context, but right. it was the council that decided. It. Right. So what I was just saying an improvement to that process to me would be to have it be everybody there for the same conversation right from the get go. And actually, there's there were two components to that one. At least the last couple of years, the town council has hired an outside facilitator to bring us together as new members come in to talk about norms and how we're going to do things. We thought about trying to do it together last year, but lots of reasons it didn't happen. But I think, is that also what you're referring to? We've talked about that. That was your idea. Yeah, because I think, I think it's related. Yeah. Yeah. 
that, that actually do a team building exercise as a full body together to try to figure out how we want to work together, what are norms, how do we want to approach the budget season and that type of thing. I think so if that you suggest that for a couple of years, and I think that's what I think we and did. And I hope you guys will do that when I'm gone. And I think we did park some resources. Last year was a resource issue. Yep. I think we did park some resources this year. So if that was of interest, it could be done as a, as a group. Did you have a vision for a time <clears throat> frame? Well, I mean, we didn't do a very good job of it last year. That was me. But the intent is to try to do it as soon as after the new, all the new members are in. So you have an election in November. And some December-ish or December. at worst case. I think it would be so. great to do it right before the holidays. Like, a, it's a, you're getting together, you're getting to know each other, you're, you know, um, everyone's fresh. And then that way when the new year comes, you're ready to, you know, committees are being formed and, and assignments have been made and you're hitting the ground running in, in January. Um, but, yeah, certainly this year the biggest challenge was just we were – Way behind. Yeah, and schedules became. Yeah, and then challenge. schedules became more and more of a challenge. And and I think, and then elaborate. No later than January. December would be ideal. No later than January. Um, the other piece on the metric, what worked is having our target. What probably didn't work is how we got there. So I think you'll see as we go through this. However, and we had one metric that may not be the right answer. So I think the process, the suggestion is, geez, if we could agree now before numbers come or sometime before the budget season starts about what we want our goal to be, actually being able to deliver on that goal at first read would be a, you know, whatever we agree upon, that would be helpful. That was the intent of the conversation, I think, a little bit. Some, uh, another th thing that uh, people felt, <coughs> uh, you, you know, uniformly that the level of collaboration that we had for this cycle was was much improved that we made an effort to hear the voices from uh, the polar extremes and and folks in between you know we we had one-off discussions with people who were uh, you know vocal supporters of the schools we had uh, uh, detailed conversations with uh, smart taxes folks and um, other interest groups you know uh, Hither and yon. So, you know, I think that at the end of it, I don't want to speak for them, but I uh, would be surprised if they, if, you know, uh, if they feel differently. You know, I think that this was a year where we made an effort to try to hear them. Uh, we didn't solve everybody's problems, but at least they had a voice, and we worked hard to try to understand what was really behind the various positions. Uh, and I think that was that was a first and something that hopefully we can continue. And some, and some of those conversations happened between the, the both bodies. So both bodies were talking to those. So I think that's that was a little bit of a change that hopefully paid dividends. Do you guys think that, that was um, – so we talk about those conversations. you talk about them in the – like in the meetings that we had established or like budget outreach? Or are you saying you reach out to these groups? Or, yeah, they were offline they discussions. Wrote, they were actually okay. not formal, you know, meetings. There were opportunities for – people to speak out, uh, you know, in public comment, which both groups did quite energetically. But there were also, you know, uh, informal offline discussions along the way and various people that served, you know, as intermediaries to try to test ideas and to try to, you know, work at problem solving on solutions. So uh, that's, that's something that's kind of hard to advertise and hard to describe exactly, but it was... Uh, More organic than... Yeah. Yeah. It was not formal. Uh, maybe there's an opportunity for us to be more formal with that and for us to go deeper and, and wider in terms of uh, various groups in the community. Um. I mean, just to, sorry. No, go, no, you first, John. No, I was just going to comment. On, I, I think people felt comfortable coming to you to talk about the issues or concerns that they had with the budget, and I think that's a positive. Um, and, and something you would probably want to replicate going forward. But not specific to individual groups, but really anybody who's a member of the community should feel like they can come and talk about concerns that they have with the budget. And to the extent right. that you have capacity, then, then you know, members of the council and school board should be willing to, to have those conversations. Yeah, yeah I, two things to add to that. I think um, as a compliment to the school board, I think this year I, I personally witnessed a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations in this room, and I think the school board didn't shy away from you know, hey, I'll go in the audience and talk to you about our budget and why we're doing it. And I think that goes a long way. I think there's, um, it's easy to 
to remove yourself when perhaps you view things through a different lens. And I feel like there was a lot. I mean, I, I personally witnessed a lot of individual outreach of, hey, if you're sitting in the audience and, and you had a public comment, I'll come up and talk to you. So I think to your point where one of the things you're trying to articulate is I, I felt like there was a, a group of uh, elected officials that were willing to say, hey, you know, let's meet or I'll see you at town hall or, you know, and, and instead of if it's an intimidating thing, it's an uncomfortable thing to talk about a lot of times when you're not necessarily eye to eye. I feel like a lot of that got stripped away this season, which was a good thing. I think that um, I know um, the budget outreaches weren't exceptionally well attended, but the one I did attend at the uh, fire station in Dunstan, I was pretty impressed with the turnout. I think we, I mean, for, for that particular one, I feel like we had 15. Yeah, about 15, um, evenly split between whatever you want to call it. And I thought that I feel like a little bit of the uh, walls have been stripped away a little bit where, I mean, there was some good rigorous debate and there wasn't a whole lot of um, talking past each other. I felt like there was some good communication, so. Yeah, I thought one thing, uh, building on your point, that helped with those, they were unstructured. You know, we didn't have a big agenda. We didn't have a lot of presentations and material to run <coughs> through. We sat and talked. We sat and heard what was on people's minds. And it, it, you know, went all over the place, but we, you know, we heard from people in terms of what was really uh, top of mind and what were their biggest concerns. So I think it's important for us to you know work at formalizing those channels and being really energetic about working the feedback uh, into the dialogue and the discussion on the work and the work of, of putting the budget together and moving it along. Um, you know, the fourth bullet, I think we kind of touched on a little bit, uh, increasing the level of uh, civil dialogue. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, we had a, a tough time with the first uh, reading, you know, not approving the budget as proposed in the first reading, but approving it uh, at a 3% level. Uh, and we can talk more about that as we shift to, uh, you know, what we might want to do differently. But I, I thought that the fact that we, it was a lightning rod for me. And I think later on in the process, uh, things seemed to go a little bit smoother because we really did the, did the shouting and, you know, had the tough talk on the front end, and by the time we got toward the end, it, we had kind of worked through a lot of those issues. So, you know, I, I know uh, onward and upward, I think there's big room for improvement, but uh, it's about setting expectations and, uh, and trying to, you know, I, I was very impressed at how both folks on the school and the town side worked energetically trying to answer every single email. I mean, I was out of town when all that happened, and I was, uh, you know, people <laughs> were going around the clock on that, so. Um, I was so, in Disney World when I was doing it, Don, yeah. so I don't know where you were, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was admiring the fireworks. <laughs> and, and I think some of this both I've got to, too, and something we probably could learn from, however we got there, and it probably wasn't perfect, but the level of dialogue in the community when it came to be budget time was different. We didn't have dueling signs. We didn't have dueling sort of social media pieces that just, there was a more sort of respectful, if you will, sort of understanding where people were and kind of moving forward. So how to me, it was a completely different feel when it came time to vote. Um, so, however, how we can get there again, I think, would just be a great thing to, to think about. I think so much of that comes down to us, right? Yeah. If, if uh, we're having a civil, civil dialogue, then I, that's, it gives people that example. I think that's absolutely true. So yeah. Keeping that in mind. And I think also uh, Bill Donovan and Paul Johnson's videos made it pretty yeah, clear. Clearly. Yes, 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 clearly. clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love those. They were very successful. They, I, know I, they were. I am like a <laughs> fan girl of those videos. I love those. I love them. But that is a great example of sort of other voices yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. kind of coming together yeah. to have yeah. that conversation. Yeah. I think there's some things that we can really just kind of yeah. leverage going forward. Yeah, I say ingest, but I mean... It, no, it made a difference. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, a lot of... When you're having these conversations, 70% of the battle is understanding what everybody's talking about yeah, because true. everybody's judging uh, the budget or what have you on a different merit or a different metric or... or, or so being different things. The more we can people. speak the same language, the better we all will be. So yeah. That's a great point. And the last point here, uh, you know, not to drain the slide completely, but um, at the end of the process, uh, I think it's fair to say that we funded the basic <laughs> needs, you know, for for schools and for the town overall. You know, I, I and I know we had it was a roller coaster ride uh, at times, and we had a very tough start with the uh, 
portables discussion, but we mm. we stuck with it and we kind of worked it. We worked the issues and uh, you know didn't throw in the towel at any point. And uh, I think the outcome uh, speaks for itself. So uh, that's that's kind of our you know our narrative. And you know, Paul and, and Peter and others yep. you know, would like to weigh in on that or reject it completely. Yeah, and I, you know, I want to go back to I think what Sarah said for me that modeling can cannot be understated. So, you mean us? Uh, yeah, us as a collective, yeah. as a whole, what we put out there for the way we speak to each other, with the way we react to what might seem like crazy. And I know everyone thought I was crazy um, and didn't like the way that you know went down. And again, we can learn from that. Um, but there were choice points there. Like, it would have been really easy for all the school board to not speak to Katie Foley after that. And that didn't happen. In fact, we had many, I had one-on-one -on -one conversations with every single person. And, you know, it, being able to, you know, have that kind of respect um, for each other, even <coughs> if we don't like the way we went about something, is huge, I think, in terms of uh, the kind of community that we want to see. Um, and, and I think that, you know, led to a lot of that other bullet of, uh, you know, I just saw much more positive all around. Um, so, uh, at this point, I'd like to hear from the town staff. You know, we've kind of uh, talked from a school and a, a town council standpoint, but I'd love to hear what you what you felt on continue and what you'd like to see continuing, and what you feel worked this past cycle. Well, I. I do have that observation on the uh, the first bullet, I guess. Uh, I think it makes entire sense to involve your school colleagues uh, in that budget, dis that, that goal discussion. Um, I think if we start off on the right foot, we're certainly going to have a better chance of ending uh, in a good place. I would observe, however, if we're going to do it in late December, no later than mid-January, that I think we need to, frankly, to get that out there early. Um, and if the expectation is to meet that goal at first reading, you're setting a goal without any understanding of what the need is. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I encourage you to do is you need to have some flexibility built into that. Yeah. You can't foresee the future. We have a sense of where it's going, but um, those few months are precious between goal setting and pres presenting a budget. This year was a prime example on the school side. They had some really unique and expensive challenges in front of them with the K-2 enrollment and the special uh, services costs. Um, I suspect those weren't known largely uh, you know, until the budget development was well underway. So I'm just observing that if you're going to set a goal early and you want us to meet it at first reading, uh, you're doing it without the benefit or the knowledge of what the need is. And uh, this year, by doing it at the first reading, uh, felt a bit uncomfortable to staff because we hadn't had a chance to tell you what the proposal was and why it was. The other thing I'll just bring up in the context of what worked because I, I we received positive contact, uh, our, our feedback was the budget document itself. Larissa did a great job of getting feedback, coming up with a refreshed look, that light, medium, and you know, full, full bodied. Um, and then also the budget portal design was reshaped this year. Um, so if we could get some feedback that we're in the right direction. Helpful. Yeah, I'd like to just interject. I thought the town did a great job responding to feedback, you know, uh, about, uh, you know, offering the different versions and people were quite happy to, you know, go to Staples for the, uh, you know, for the folks that are seeking merit badges on the topic and, you know, for for others, they had choices, you know. We've got uh, some Eagle Scouts in town. <laughs> <laughs> so. I've got another continue. So kind of to play off of uh, the Councillor Johnson, Councillor Donovan uh, runaway hits. Um, we also, just because I can kind of see on the back end what we have for viewership, and, and um, we also had a, in the like five to six hundred range of each department head video as well, which I thought was really <coughs> remarkable. The fact that five hundred people would take the time to listen to our public works director and finance director and, and community services director talk about the specifics of their budget and what was important. And I think that even though, yes, we understand that people are going to vote on the school budget, I think that there is a sense that they're also using that as an opportunity to speak to the municipal budget as well. So having an opportunity to explain to people and have them see the faces of the senior staff that are charged with building those budgets, um, I think that that would be something I would like to see continue from a communication standpoint. It's a great 
I think we all just looked at each other and yeah. said we should do that for the school. Yeah, I thought that was really huge. Good to yeah. Yeah. Very helpful. To, good to know. Because that's your, those are your experts. And hearing directly from them about, you know, uh, you know on the fire department, the staffing issues he's had for decades, mm -hmm. I didn't even know about that. I've, I've lived here for a decade. So. No, that came about really because of uh, Larissa's suggestion and, more importantly, your persistence. Um, it's uncomfortable for many of us to be in front of the video. Um, but I think we've kind of broken the ice, and hopefully we'll be able to continue that, if not expand it. Are those just posted on Facebook, so that 500? Yeah. Um, yep, those are just from there. And I, just as a, as a soft um, plug, those were made possible because of an intern that we had doing some <coughs> communications work for us, um, kind of thinking moving forward um, whether council wishes to consider communications staff in the future or <laughs> increasing our intern budget so we always have intern staff that can perform those services for us just as a soft plug. Very well played. Thanks. Thanks. And the budget season officially begins. Larissa <laughs> 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 so just threw the first pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's already started. <laughs> Um, I think what I kind of liked is that, yes, they set the goals at the first reading or, or that hard goal, but that at, during the process there were adjustments that were made, and, and um, I, I still don't remember where we left off, I've got the printouts, but I mean, you know, we may have still stayed at the 3%, but there were adjustments that were, you know, that the staff didn't feel like, oh, you know, this is it, we're done. So I thought that was nice. You know, I've been a, a resident for more decades than I want to admit, <laughs> and I've been through a lot of these processes along the way because I've been the town 30 years, and actually this year was, um, I'd like to commend the school board because I, I really thought you guys, for the first time, more so than ever, I really understood why you were asking for what you were asking for, and I thought that was awesome, and, and I, I think... I haven't seen the two sides work better together than I did last year. Sure. Sure. Thanks. And uh, just from a process standpoint, I'm going to, you know, we normally do public comment at one in one shot, but I'm going to turn it over to, uh, you know, to Steve and Larry if you want to comment on what you think worked. If you, if there's anything in that category, I'm taking them way out on a limb here. But uh, if you want to speak to that now, or you want to speak uh, at the end, um, you know. Uh, don't need to put you on the spot, but I know you're not shy of retiring individuals. Your microphone. Yeah, probably. I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is my name and address? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. I think you got to turn the. So the, much for informing. You got to turn yeah. the hand, with the wand on there. <clears throat> you got to speak to my right now. Yeah. You got to keep to what you got to keep to what works, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, we gave him the option. It's going to be, it's gonna be as quick as public comedy he's ever given. <laughs> Hello? Hello? You're good. Can you hear me now? It's working. Yeah. Yeah. We can hear you. Uh, Larry Harpo, 5 Colby Drive. Um, I think, as far as positive things, a new school board member, the, the attitude of the new members of the school board made a glacial or major change right from the start. Uh, individuals that are willing to talk uh, to talk to people that from all sides, and I think that's that was very helpful this year for everyone involved. Um, Katie, she put a voodoo on me this year and, and made me calmer and nicer, I guess. Try. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a chance to speak. Yeah. Again. <laughs> yes. Share my witch doctor thing later. <laughs> so let's uh, let's go on to. Uh, uh, what we want to not repeat. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Uh, sure. So for our stops, um, we solicited feedback, as, as Sarah said, we solicited feedback from the school board, um, not just the finance committee. And so um, one of the overall feelings that we got from other board members was that the school committee, the finance committee, needs to stop um, defending um, a personal role when we're having some of these hard conversations. Um, and we're going to talk about some strategies and, and kind of, a, as a group, collectively work on this. Because 
you know, sometimes, and you guys have personnel where it's one person who fills a certain role, um, it, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to have a public conversation about someone's job yeah. um, without making it personal. And so that was one area, you know, where we felt like a couple of times conversations weren't as productive as they could have been because for us it became, it became about defending that, that personal role. Um, and then the feedback from board members who were not finance committee members <coughs> was that the multiple budget outreach meetings, um, that the participation just wasn't worth um, the time. And I will speak for myself for a second and say, I actually, I mean, I have the availability and so I don't mind um, attending multiple sessions. And I think I missed the Dunstan one and the Wentworth one. Um, but other than that, I tried to attend all of them. Um, and so for me personally, I don't mind doing the multiple sessions, but we also acknowledge that that uh, is a discussion that we need to have and really look at um, whether it's, you know, we're Did getting we enough. Five this year? We did. five. Okay. Yeah. So maybe it's a number, maybe right. just reducing. Well, I think to add to that too, I, we don't have, not everybody has to be involved in those. I mean, I think if, if there's members of the school board and or town council that are more willing to, to put in more of those meetings, I don't think there's anything wrong with, because I, I know on our end, I felt like we were trying to give two to everybody, I believe it yeah. was. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, if, if Councillor Johnson wants to take four because that's his thing, then, you know, let, let people. Paul will do four. I, I would, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well I failed on one. <laughs> But I, I just, I, perhaps you guys had the same dynamic, yep. but I, it struck me that, you know, it, there's seven people, seven different strengths. If, Some may be more yeah, available. Absolutely, if there's two yeah. or three people that are, so. I but. wondered what, uh, when Don was speaking a little bit to this earlier about it, trying <coughs> to find a way to increase those who do attend. And, you know, that's a struggle that we've had for years with all the different types of things that we've done in, trying to increase outreach to the public is always, you know, if you build it, will they come? Um, and I guess it's a perennial challenge. We've tried changing the times around. We've tried, tried changing the locations around. We've tried having central place. We've had tried going out into the community. And each of those has their challenges. So I put it out there as a wonder of, you know, is there a better way? And that was sort of my, that, that's what it raised for me, whether we have the time is, is a different issue that we just didn't get a lot of people in that format. So really, is that format the best way to reach everybody? And I remember, I can't remember, who's, who's the candidate that's run a couple of times? Ben? Oh, ben Howard. Ben Howard. Howard. I mean, at one point, I mean, it's it's the millennials. I'm learning that I'm just dated. I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> but, but he had a comment with technology. He said, we were available, but people could kind of, from home, you know, there's technology that they could call in with questions. Because what I've heard a lot for people is, we have them in the evening, they're getting home from work, they right. have kids at home, they have dinners. So maybe it's a bigger question that we could work on is, we tried different formats. I don't think we've hit, it sounds like the videos may actually be a more successful way to, I mean, if you reach 500, mm -hmm with videos. I doubt we had 500 in all of these meetings that we did, so. Could you have a virtual town hall? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so. How many unique? Um, I, so and I didn't keep the same sort of records as I kept the year okay. before because the numbers were just so low, yeah. but I would estimate that we didn't have more than 30 unique attendees and that would be a high estimate. Yeah. Mm. I mean, of, of okay. these? For, the, okay. the, for all the the yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, so. So it's, it's, it, I think it's more of a question is, was that the best vehicle? Is there a different way that we can reach them, which probably should be a discussion we can have yep. we through had the summer and fall. We had talked about doing Facebook Live. Yeah. yeah. You know, making yeah. them interactive. Yeah. Again, need that intern. <laughs> <laughs> so we were pretty So those are our stops. Sure. Okay. Um, the stop list. Great. I'm not sure when you bring it up, but at um, the front end, uh, Julie and I have done for two or three years the uh, listening sessions. And, right. Oh, that's true. I just wonder if people had any comment on whether that's a, well, you think that's productive. What, what was your? I think you'd have the better feedback on yeah. that probably. And then I also oh. would wonder about the same question. Is it unique uh, <clears throat> attendees? Not typically. Uh, always interesting conversation. It's uh, very informal. And we talked about what's on their minds. It doesn't really produce, uh, I guess, the desired result, which is uh, help us inform before we propose the budget, what you like, what you don't like. Uh, 
very often very specific questions about one thing or another. And I'm pleased to make myself available. I'm inclined to do it again. I'm just wondering if we had any feedback. Can I also, the we, this is the second year that they were done. The first year, just like with the neighborhood budget sessions, they were very well attended. Mm -hmm. The Listen to Learn sessions um, of 2018, we had, a, and it really informed that year's school boards, some of their decisions. We had especially a Tuesday afternoon at 2, um, or noon, I don't remember which time it was, but there was um, a large group of parents that came to that session. And that session ended up being really about foreign language and music and, and um, parking for special needs at school buildings, and it really did inform some of the, the budget that was proposed that year. This year, just like the neighborhood budget meetings, the attendance at those listen to learn sessions in January plummeted, and and we don't know why. They were the same times of day, same multiple locations. Um, they just didn't have the attendance. I would like to do it again. Yeah. 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 And I, I think. Um, those would be valuable to given that the school has a new superintendent. Mm -hmm. So opportunities for him yeah, to do those community, 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 community outreach are going to be really important. It'd be a good opportunity for him. And the, and the other thing too is if we're talking about technology, again, maybe filming those sessions mm -hmm. so that other people can weigh in. Mm -hmm. And one of the other pieces that we've talked about is having some type of way for people to give feedback electronically outside of those right. um, you know single meetings or, or one time events and you know that's a little bit harder to manage we need the we need three interns for that one but uh, you know it's all it's all part of the making things accessible yeah despite the low attendance of these there may be some value in the, the effort that's put forth that people acknowledge that we are we're making the effort yeah. um, mm. Can't say that that's exactly the case, but it certainly can't hurt to demonstrate that we've held, you know, kind of list the, uh, the things that we've done in the process. Probably has some value. I I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to sit down with you guys, and it, it, like you said, it's an intimate session. So I, I think there's maybe seven or eight people at, at the one that I went to, but you you really get to get a better feel for what's going on in the town and uh, and sharing your feedback on what we should and shouldn't do. And I don't know that. Uh, there was a lot of translation from what was said in the meeting to what made it to the budget, <laughs> at least for the ones that, that I went to. But I appreciated the opportunity to, to meet you guys and speak with you guys. Yeah. Well, and I said this at communications a couple meetings ago. It's not always about the widest net. I mean, I mean, it's. I, I feel like a lot of times with these communication efforts, we judge the success on how many people. Well, mm -hmm. sometimes it's really about getting st stakeholders or people that are going to talk to their friends or you know, talk to their friends' friends. Like. That influ influences are okay to sit down with too. So I mean, it's not the success of these. Granted, we'd all want a hundred people in the in the room, but the success of them isn't necessarily if if the net caught the most. Sometimes it's it's really about the value and the the quality of the conversations. So, great. On, on our view, you know <clears throat> what uh, didn't go so well. Uh, you know, was the mill rate thing was sort of a. Uh, double-edged sword, you know, good on the one hand, but uh, relying on one metric and one that's complicated and we still, everyone needs a decoder ring, you know, uh, to figure out what it really means. Um, we didn't really feel we got into a full consideration of long-range issues uh, and, the, and addressing the debt burden. I mean, I think that we, uh, you know, the, the debt load went up. Uh, you know, we kind of hit the number, but it wasn't pretty the way we got there. You know, it sounds like how a lot of times companies achieve quarterly results. You know, it's not it's not a sustainable model. You know, so we we need to do better on that score. Uh, I'm going to run through all of these, then we can kind of follow. Uh, you know, drink, go back and address the ones that people uh, you know want to drill, drill deeper on. We talked about the neighborhood meetings and the poor attendance. I think that we've uh, you know gone through that at, uh, in some length. Uh, and it was kind of the same, you know, it was the usual suspects at each meeting. So it's more, it ended up being more like a club than a, you know, than a neighborhood meeting at the time. So delivering the one budget that didn't meet the stated goal at the first read, you know, we talked about that being, uh, you know, a break, you know, a breaking event, you know, uh, you know, uh, and that it took us a fair amount of time, I think, to redirect it back on track after that. Uh, and finally, I, 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 we had, I think, high hopes for the collaboration 
between the council and the school board. I think we made some great strides, but I think it still uh, fell short of expectations and potential at uh, committee level. And I, I you know, I, I feel personally that that was, you know, more of, uh, you know, a fault of, of, of us on the town side. We didn't really have as much robust activity. We had a calendar that was sort of, we, we did a lot of stops and starts and we weren't really clear at, at times in some some of the meetings what we're trying to accomplish at that meeting. You know, we kind of, we, you know, we addressed it at the last moment We and, uh, and that made it tougher. So I think there's a great opportunity there, a nice start, but uh, I think we, we could have done a lot more with that and can do a lot more going forward. So that, that's the quick run through on, uh, you know, what didn't work so well from town view, you know, I'd uh, be happy to hear from others as well, town staff, or, you know, could dive deeper on any of those. You know, and and choice. I think my perspective is a little detail around the debt burden piece. It really was more of, especially where we find ourselves with the situation of what are the investments that are looming in front of us as a town. We have the portable trailers that, you know, we had conversations about, but there's a primary school coming. There's a library expansion coming. There's a new turf. So what I don't think we've still done a really good job before the budget even, even starts to really try to look ahead and say, what are the big budget items that are coming? And that's really important because looking ahead to what our debt service is and where we may have peaks and valleys in the debt service so that we could layer something in and not impact the budget, it's all about timing. And I still think we have a... We really don't have a good handle of what those. I mean, we're at a hundred million or so in debt, and we're looking at probably another hundred million. That's on the next five years. That so that's doubling the debt burden. That's something that we really should have lots of conversation about before we even get to the budget. That'd be a great thing to do in the off season, if you will, mm -hmm. is really think about how can we push this out, how can we move things along, because each year we're not really sure where those things are going to be. I mean. The library and the school may end up on the same referendum in the same year. It might not, but those would be critical things to kind of start to plan for now. So that that was sort of the conversation around the debt. It's more the strategic planning of a business model about when can we take on debt, when we can't take on debt, how do we do it so it doesn't impact our bond ratings. It, it's that conversation we really haven't had collaboratively that I think would be helpful. Oh, okay. A couple things. So, um, one, I think we missed one really big continue for me anyway, and I wanted to make sure we get it down, is that having the, the budget to us a week ahead of time before the first reading was huge. Oh, it was yeah. the first, you know, just for me, I, I always felt, I, mean, I just remember my first year as a counselor going, I got this, I haven't even seen it, and I'm supposed to approve it, and it, that just never felt right to me. Um, and it still doesn't seem right to me. So I appreciate it. I know it put you guys on an extreme uh, fast pace, but <coughs> I think it's important. Um, one of the things that, uh, for me, again, and I don't know exactly how to articulate this, but that came out of a lot of those one-on-one -on -one conversations that I had with school board members after the uh, you know, infamous amendment was simply the alignment of timing and process. So where a lot of school board members feel like, geez, Katie, my biggest concern is, you know, we've been at this for X, Y, Z many months, and we've been part of this, and as a, as a counselor, if I wasn't on the finance committee, I, you know, the first reading is really my first opportunity to weigh in. And it seems like you school board members are much more involved earlier, mm -hmm. and is that something that the council can actually yeah. learn and involve uh, all members a lot sooner? So. Of my three years, I will say, you know, it, this was, I at least felt like I had a voice. In the first year, I wasn't even allowed to sit at the finance table for a meeting. So I feel like we have made great strides, and we have come a long way in changing some of that, those cultural pieces. Um, you know, is it perfect? No, a <laughs> long way to go. But I think we could learn from them, because if they're feeling, well, we're so far away, how can you change this on us now? And we're feeling like, well, I, this is the first chance I even have to weigh in something between our two processes are not well aligned. It's interesting because we do have different roles because the school obviously is a department of the town. So we're sort of cruising along on the timeline that, for example, public safety is or public works or any of the 
town's departments um, and you know, folding ourselves into the whole that is then brought to the town council. So um, it's a bit of a shift, I think, for us to think about being more, having more understanding earlier in the process for the council. Well, maybe I think we can this team fit ourselves, like you say, into that process a little bit earlier with Tom and understanding what those departments are move, working on and moving, working towards before we see a budget in April. Well, I mean, a good example that I think is, I think the process we had is this year we had Tom and Julie kind of present the budget a week before we're going to have the first read. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of us, we had met as a group, but we didn't know even as a joint finance committee where their numbers, that the one town, one budget, we didn't have a good sense of where the one town, one budget landed. And I don't think mm -hmm. town councilors really knew until that day that mm -hmm. they were doing the presentation of where it was ending up. So I think what Katie's saying makes a lot of sense. Probably before that presentation is done, there sh we should build into our schedule that the joint finance committees sees the combined numbers mm -hmm before anything goes public and we have a chance to react. So how, yeah, however people you do like it. surprises like on their birthday and Christmas, right? That's <laughs> really about it. After that, you're not like, you know, being a part of things and being involved is important. So somehow, so when we build the budget schedule this year, we should try to build in, and I, I hear Tom, it really gets tough with the timing, but we should sort of generally know where, how big the red box is or isn't. Yeah, and timing is a challenge. I, mean, I don't know. see all my department requests, including the school, any more than four weeks before presentation. Hmm. And so there's a lot of machination, yeah, a lot of work that's done in those final weeks. Yeah. So adding in an additional step before presentation it will take some, some doing for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, it, I, I thought the purpose of tonight, though, was just to kind of, yeah. you know, just kind of say, Get gee, what, what might improve a process and then to figure out how to do that is going to be. Dream realistic or not and figure that out later but no I understand that that is there are lots of moving parts and it's really difficult but but just just at least the joint finance not you know having that knowledge ahead so we can say hey that's that's good or that's not good or anyway it's just a and then the, the finance committee could present to their respective boards you know during the like the council meeting on what they've learned prior to yes. the, the budget being yeah. issued or something yeah, but that's been mostly around what are the drivers, what are we seeing, but no real specifics. So anyway, just as we debrief, that was just. So one other observation I had, and this actually just literally happened to me again last week. It was someone in the office pulled me, that lives in Scarborough, pulled me aside, and there, st there was still a perception that we cut, like, major positions from the budget. And I, I'm, I'm looking at this person, and I'm really trying to listen and understand, and I'm feeling like we pretty much gave every position, almost, not everything, but it was pretty close to all the investment requests that were asked. So how do we celebrate that better? And how do we get that word out better that, look, I, you know, maybe we're not back to where we wanted to be and there's, you know, still some ground to make, but celebrate the, the, the good pieces of it. Because that kind of felt like, geez, I, you know, I felt like we made a lot of significant investments this year. And that person's perception was that we cut a lot of positions. And I think that gets to what we were talking about, the language piece. We have conditioned ourselves in this town that if something gets put into the budget as an ask, if it doesn't get granted as a cut, a cut to the budget, versus an investment. usually the word cut means that someone has a position today, their position has been gone. And I don't think there was a single position we eliminated in the budget. There were some asks that we didn't grant in total. But even that language is important. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of these process and timing issues are rooted directly with the charter. So uh, I've heard conversation around perhaps you know, reopening the charter. Yeah. Um, I do have copies of the Article 5. Uh, perhaps I can send them home with you. But um, just to uh, try to paraphrase uh, a couple of different articles, essentially I am tasked with proposing a budget. And I think that, that delineation is pretty clear. Uh, presumably, I'm aware of the, the needs of the town side of the, the affairs, and I take the recommendation from the school board, the department of the, of the, the town. So essentially, uh, the 
the manager starts the conversation mm -hmm. based on what he recommends or she recommends as the needs of the, the, the community in the coming year. And then I hand it over to the council. And then it's yours very clearly under the charter to review, to amend, to do whatever you will with it. And then you hand it back to me at the end. It's my next. So there are very clear delineation of roles and responsibilities. So changing some of that process, uh, we really need to be mindful of what the charter says and what it intends. Uh, I guess the other thing to keep in mind is that it goes on to say, uh, once I submit the budget to the council, you have 60 days to pass it. So the sooner we start it, uh, you'll have no more time to finish it. And so you say that again. So what? You have to pass it within 60 days. You have to pass it within 60 days. So if you define the delivery of the budget to the council at an earlier stage, you still have under the charter 60 right. days to complete your work. It seems to make sense to line up the validation vote with the scheduled June primary, and so I think you know, that it has a lot to do with how the schedule is, is derived. It's worth noting that in the event, and I'll read my quote, in the event the town council shall fail to adopt the budget within said 60-day period, the budget as presented by the manager and the board of managers shall automatically become the budget for the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Same and rules of both down. Right, you stick with the old budget? It's slightly different, but uh, it provides vision. That language is really severe. Yeah. Right. And, and I would dare say, I wasn't here at the drafting of that, but that was purposeful. That was yeah. uh, you know, to, center. to really encourage, obviously, the council to, to take its responsibility seriously and to work through their budget and do, do it diligently. And if you don't, there are some pretty severe consequences. Right. So, so I'm thinking in, in terms of that timeline, and I think, Peter, were you the one who said you were a dinosaur? Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm like an amoeba or whatever <laughs> you know, the next thing down is. But it, in my experience, that having the first reading of something, and you know, this goes to what we were talking about earlier, Katie, is, is the opportunity for us to lay the object on the table for scrutiny. And so my worry is that if we are... Um, setting ourselves a goal that we meet at first reading, in some small way, for me, it begins to invalidate the rest of the process. Mm -hmm. well, so that's my perspective. Um, I throw it out there for, for comment. Okay. Others? Well, I, I think that's because we're always talking in context of a 3% no rate increase, right? So to me, the way that we do it right now, you're either, it's pretty clear you either hit or you miss it, right? But if you actually judge something on a series of metrics that is not just a m hit or miss, then you can still have those fruitful conversations and you can still have the scrutiny. So if we have five different metrics we're judging this budget on, and I don't know what this goal is, I'm not proposing any solutions because we can't propose solutions, but I think a lot of the, the friction that we're experiencing is because what we know as proposed meeting the goal is 3% or not, right? Well, the goal doesn't have to be defined by one number of a mill rate. The goal could be defined by five different metrics, and one of them clearly should be something around the, the long-range issues with the debt burden. So there's an example. So is the proposal that, for instance, in the way I look at this is the proposed budget this year, I thought did a pretty solid <coughs> job of, of forward thinking and the debt burden. It had the it had the it had the machine machinery fund in it. It had it had several things that were not bonded that we were going to pay cash for. And then we took that, we threw that all out the window in order to meet the goal, right? So so at that point, right there, to me the budget had high marks for debt burden, or it had reasonable marks for debt burden and, and planning for the future. And it didn't have such great marks for the mill rate, right? So then we ended up trading trading it off. So in a roundabout way, I guess what I am trying to say is I think some of this anxiety stems from we're so conditioned that the goal is one metric, do or die, drop dead, where I think there still could be room for having a goal, a goal that could be met, and we could still have scrutiny, and and we could still end up at the, pro at the end of the process. I don't know what that is yet, but I feel like a lot of our thinking is framed because of but the way. metric aside, I think what I'm hearing Kate say, or I'll say it for myself, is that the question is whether you meet that goal in day one or you start the conversation, you 
go through the delivery process, uh, you do what you do, and I think what matters is where you end. And that's appreciably different. And that, that is what I'm saying, and, and the reason I'm saying it the way I am is because it speaks to that <coughs> timeline, and it speaks to the concern of these governing bodies about not having enough information to get to their goal, or not having enough information to make a reasonable conclusion about whether they should vote for something or not, or support it or not, or change it or not. Can um, I just speak to one thing about yeah, that? So, please. and I want to try to use like a different example because I think again, so this is just my three-year experience. So, let's take um, a, a different issue like an ordinance, right? You know, there, my first year on the council again, I was coached and guided that well, you just pass it on the first reading. Because it's going to go, to, or something's going to get pushed to a committee, and the committee is going to fully vet it. And then when it comes back to you, the expectation was, well, it's already been fully vetted, so you can't make an amendment and change it at the second reading. And if you recall, one of my experiences was was trying to put back in six thousand um, dollars for beach, beach raking at, at a second reading. Well, I was, and I'm just. I'm just being very honest and candid here because I think it's important to put this on the table for folks. And, and you know, I, was, I felt crucified for asking for $6,000 for beach raking because it was irresponsible, and these are quotes, of a counselor to make an amendment at a second reading when the finance committee has already fully vetted it. So I'm speaking to cultural pieces and how we, and you heard me say earlier, I feel like it's about how we speak to each other. It's about how we... Um, you know, let each other into the process. And again, this year, if I attended a finance meeting, you know, I could very well much provide some input and feel heard. Um, but that wasn't always the case, which is why I kind of formed that opinion the way I did. Like, you know, I, if because if I let's just take it again, if I pass it on the first reading, because I'm supposed to let the process unfold, and then you're not. And then I'm not allowed to, right, yeah. and then I go to make my $1.3 million adjustment at the second reading, guess what happens there? Like, so I'm not saying what I, the way we did it was perfect. I'm challenging us to think about always um, um, not conforming to, because we've always done it that way. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I, I guess that's, yeah, and again. It's unfortunate you had that experience, but uh, more times than not, so the finance committee comes forward with a fairly substantial set of uh, amendments, but more times than not, there are additional amendments that are offered and accepted uh, beyond that. And it's unfortunate you had that experience. I think it's also important to look back at our track record. Even you know during the time that we've set this, maybe it's the wrong method, but a no rate related budget goal, uh, we've always beat it. We've never met it. In fact, we've exceeded it on, on a number of occasions. And what's curious to me is um, why we did it differently this year and had a far more positive result in the polls. 73%, right, margin of support, yeah. which is the most I can remember I on my term or understand what was different in 10 years. Something resonated with the voters, at least the Lower but turnout, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think you both had wanted to... Um, at some point, but. Yeah, that's okay. Um, thank you. The it's such a unique position to be in from the school side because none of the other departments of the town have elected officials that represent them. They don't have you know a a budget process that goes through such a lengthy you know and and very official. Um, path, if you, for lack of a better word. The, the significant problem I had this year was with the goal setting and something that I think, you know, we really need to discuss is the school, the school alone, the school department alone cannot meet a 3% increase to the mill rate. When we are developing our budget, we are just, a, I mean, we're a very large portion of the budget, but we're only one component of the budget. And so we are working in isolation when we are building our budget and then we put forward our piece and we've been told that we didn't hit the goal um, in the past when we literally can't. I mean, we, we don't, there are too many other variables in play.
for the school department alone to put forth a budget that we feel confident will or will not result in a 3% increase to the mill rate. And so when we talk about goal setting, you know, if we continue to work forward towards this 3% goal, it's with the acknowledgement, I hope, that the school department really is working in the dark towards that goal. And we don't know until all the pieces start to get, come together what the final impact is going to be on the tax rate. And so it's, it's a hard, it's a very difficult um, position to be in as someone who wants to meet the goal. You know, I'm, I'm, I want to work towards something. I want it to be collaborative. I want it to be honest. But my honest opinion this past cycle or now and now that we've kind of learned how to do this is I, I mean I don't know whether five of our investment proposals is a reasonable thing to put forward or whether 25 of our investment proposals is reasonable until we see you know a much bigger picture right. which is what the intent of the first reading right. is, is and so see that right and so time. thank you so to bring it kind of full cir circle from the school side first reading for us feels more comfortable to kind of just put it all out on the table and say these are all the things and not worry so much about whether or not we are going to be 1.3 million dollars over or above yep. you know a three percent mill rate. Yep. And I was just going to say we should try to wind up on this but I want to make sure we allow yeah. enough time at the end for talking about uh, you know what we want to start doing and, and get some input also from, uh, from the public. Can you say one quick thing? What did not work for me? <laughs> I did. So when we compare ourselves to other towns, our voter turnout's fantastic. Like, you know, when two, three hundred people in a town the same size as ours are showing up for their polls. So we still blow them away. But it is very sad to me that because we didn't have controversy, mm -hmm. we didn't have engagement in the turnout yeah. and the numbers. And that really, that did hit my heart. And I will tell you, just it made me sad because I don't, I don't want to live in a town where you have to, you know, throw a dog suit on and dance on a corner to get. I hear you, to Katie. The <laughs> Believe yeah. me. Although Hi. that was fun. Yeah. So yeah. Peter's chopping out the bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of wanted to react to what first. Tom said and what Katie said. And, and Tom, you wondered why it was different this year. And I think it was different because the problem with the first read, and it was actually in the language of it creates tension. I think what's happened in the past. Let's just, I mean, 3% may not be the right piece, but the problem is we put out to the community that our goal is the budget's going to come in at X. But if we're sitting around the table and saying, well, we know we really can't do that and we're going to deliver at the first read X plus 5, it is predictable that that group that was expecting that number is going to be up in arms and then we're off to the races. So I think think what we're talking about is not solving it tonight and it's not focusing on what the metric is but if we're going to communicate a goal in January whatever it is and if it's fair and reasonable it should be what we delivered the night of the first read in the way I think Tom has done a great job as a town manager whatever the goal is he may not like the goal he got but he will always deliver that number but he'll always be very clear about this is what it means. This is what we can't do. These are the gaps we're going to uh, net, whatever you, language you want to use. And then just like was suggested, then it becomes a conversation about, well, geez, maybe that goal's not right. Maybe we can, sorry, you guys have developed that. Maybe we need to make these investments and make that case to all of us and bring the public along with us. So I, I think where we're trying to get to is whatever we set as the metric, and we can argue about what that can be or can't be, but I, I think we need to tie wherever we land and communicate we're going to be. If we come in ahead of that, that's a win. But if we always come in over that, that's it. And I think having a process by which, as the two budgets are being done individually, you know, and Tom, to get to your to your time frame, you know, if you just present it to the finance committees, that isn't presenting it to the whole council yet, right? I mean, that doesn't present it to the finance committee. It needs to be done and complete. Um, right. Well, talking about the 60-day uh, 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 trigger, yeah, trigger, trigger for the chart. Yeah, right. the, the real trigger starts when you present it. <clears throat> but I think what I was trying to work into the solution, at some point, however that works in the schedule, yeah. we should just get the two bodies together and say, put the number together, and are we going to meet 
whatever the metric is mm -hmm. or not, and at least gives us, it takes the surprise out of it. So however we do that, um, even it's the day, uh, so th yeah, that's the thought. You can make it tighter plus delta, right? So instead of two to three percent on either side of that, it shrink it into one and a half or whatever that looks like. But yeah, you guys can do that. that. I, I've heard from Jillian for a couple years running, uh, and I feel it's to some extent there are certain things that uh, we would be remiss as professionals, I think more so on the school side, almost derelict in duties uh, by not providing adequate funding for whatever it is incoming enrollment or in its where the bearers of bad news, it's an inconvenient truth that we've got a big problem on our hands. But so it sounds like it's a yeah uh, process and a measures issue. So I'm gonna we're gonna move on. I think we uh, John, go ahead quickly. Well, just real quick, I, I, I kind of understand what Tom's saying in that you know his goal and responsibility is to satisfy the needs of the town, but you're giving him guidance uh, or a financial metric to try to uh, you know hit, and he typically hits it. But I think at first read. Uh, he needs to present a little more than that. And and he wants to present something that's going to show that we're going to achieve what we're setting out to do as a town or as a school. We're going to educate our kids. And then between first and second read, how you want to look back to narrow it to get towards that guidance. And then the only other thing I wanted to comment on was I didn't think there was a lot of discussion around the capital improvement plan okay. this year. And I know we have one. Yeah. Um, and I think it's helpful to create some focus on that because it Absolutely. helps you look ahead a little bit. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. Well, uh, we're going to jump to uh, starts and make sure that we get into that. We'll get uh, you know, public comment uh, you know, on, on both uh, stops and starts. So let's go ahead. Sure. Cool. Um, so, I mean, the first one on the list is exactly what we've been talking about. Um, I'll skip over some of these just in the interest of time. Um, the second bullet, better to find the relationship between BOE and, and town uh, council finance committee. So I think... One of the things that we want to do in this next workshop where we're defining goals process is also define what this relationship is. Cause, um, you know, we, we've had joint meetings. Uh, we had them this year. I think they had them last year as well to varying degrees of success or productivity. As April said, we are a department of the town. So it's a bit of a unique relationship compared to the other departments. Um, I think at the beginning, we all set out with the best of intentions with the understanding that we're in this kind of moving together in one boat. It didn't really feel like we were all in it together because it, when it relates to the school budget, it felt like we still were answering a lot of the same questions over and over again. And there wasn't the same understanding of the school budget from the town council as there was from the school, which is fine. You guys have a lot of other departments mm -hmm. to understand. But I, I think it was just a little bit of a false a misconception that maybe we we're in this as a team when the reality is we're still handing you this budget and saying, please, please say yes, or please say no. Um, and so I think we need to figure out, do you, are you guys just going to tell us a goal and you want us to, to deliver it? That's one way. Or are we really going to work on that together? And I think defining what that relationship looks like is going to be really important for us moving forward. Yeah, I that's great. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, everything else we pretty much talked yep, about. We've covered a lot. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Before. I, oh, oh, sorry. I did want to say one thing. The regarding the timeline. The second vote of the budget is actually after the date in which ballots are available. Yeah. So I think when we're looking at the timeline, we need to yeah. figure that out because that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and this is a good point. It's so opportunity to vote on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Okay. Right. I'm going to uh, run through these quickly. Uh, <coughs> more clarity on the budget schedule. I referenced that earlier. Uh, I, I think we need to start the collaborative work much or, much earlier. And to your point, I think we need to define what that means. And in some ways. Uh, you know, there's no way getting around the fact that we still approve a budget. So, is you know, let's be realistic about. Uh, I mean, there's a way for us to collaborate, but at the end of the day, we still have an approval responsibility and role. So, I don't know. You know, I I think there's a way to do both of those mm -hmm. uh, and a better job, particularly in the front end, rolling up to it. Um, broader input and participation in goal setting. I think we touched on that um, pretty well earlier. Just you know, building on the collaboration, 
on the theme of a zero budgeting perspective, I know this is, a, and I, I'm sensitive to what, uh, you know, what uh, April had said before about, uh, you know, we can't do a 3%, you know, mill rate or 3% net, you know, or zero net budget increase, you know, or even a 3% net, net budget increase. We're faced with needs that increase and cost more year after year. Um, so I, I think there's got to be some way for us to get the efficiency theme out there, uh, you know, on, uh, on the school side as well as, uh, you know, the town side. And I would, we beat that drum repeatedly, but uh, I, I, you know, hopefully there's some way for us to get at it. And then finally, long-range planning. We touched on long-range planning. John mentioned the point about capital and debt. Uh, but we've got big issues and trade-offs we have to make. Uh, otherwise, we're going to end up, uh, you know, really burning through uh, a lot of debt in order to fund what we need to do uh, in, in terms of essential needs, but also lots of other things that are coming down the pipe, low-income housing, senior housing, you know, the downs, and so forth. Um, but there, I heard a general theme about there a need to have maybe a better running uh, monthly or quarterly handle on financials running up and through the budget process and not just starting that in January. So, um, so these are these are the high points uh, for what we could do differently next year. And now we, uh, you know, we know there are third rails. You know, the idea about addressing the uh, contractual obligations. I know. All sorts of energy around that about it being hands off, but there's still the concept of having, you know, a big chunk of the budget that we somehow can't influence uh, is really a, a challenge, I think, for us to manage. At least, you know, from a town standpoint, you know, coming out of a private sector, you know, uh, framework that's that's really there's there's usually you know uh, a feeling that there still should be a way that to work through those trade offs and to find some favorabilities. So that's the town. You know, a uh, side of things very quickly. Uh, and Peter, Paul, I'd love for you to project all that. Or... <laughs> and I, I think I think you you teed on the word just as just as it brought up. We may not do or have done as as well as we can on the strategic planning and debt and capital asset planning. I don't think we as a town yet have done a really good job of having trade off conversations. You know, if we're gonna if we need to do more of something. Is there something we can do less of? But what we usually do, the language we use is we start at baseline services, which means it assumes, and I'm talking about the town as well, that we're going to do everything we're doing today, and then here's the additional things that we need. But part of conversations have to be, geez, as a community, and I think, Don, this is what you've tried to get at too, what does the community value as the most value-added services that we should do? And what services may not be as value add, and how do we have those trade off conversations? Because when it comes to trade off conversations, we've always kind of shied away from it. And that's, I think, as we look to our future and the things that are coming down the pike, and if we have a downturn in the economy at some point, at some point that's got to be part of our DNA as we approach the budget. How do we, if we do more of this, how do we do less of that? So I think that's. So I don't know how we do that, but I think that's, you know, something we need to bake into sort of our conversations. Any reactions to that comment, Jerry? We should start to get some information around that. We do have some money. Uh, it may not be enough, but we'll find ways to stretch it as far as we can to really do that satisfaction survey. So we don't yeah. have a good feedback loop. Uh, you know, these right. listening sessions were right. intended to tell me what you like and you don't like. That's really not what they ended up being. They like everything. Right, so if, uh, and we're going to have to be really thoughtful how we characterize yeah. and structure yeah. that so we give meaningful input. Um, with that, then we can assign, you know, we, we know the cost uh, of those services, and so we can start to have, you know, a more informed discussion around that, I suppose. But that's been a, a challenge for us. Is if no one is telling us anything, whether they, you know, whether they like it or they don't, it's really hard to know what to Or if the uniform more like or everything. Or right. One of the things that I, I take away from this is, and, and from our conversation last week as well in, in our finance committee, is that I think that um, the school department can do a little bit better job articulating what our process is. Mm -hmm. Because to my mind, we do something very similar to zero-based budgeting. It's just not in the public eye. Mm -hmm. And 
by the time our budget gets out to the point where we're having these conversations, it's been through a very rigorous process, but that is not um, visible necessarily. So, um, you know, one of the things that I'm thinking about as I'm hearing this feedback is not necessarily that we would have to change our process so much, but that we would have to explain why our process is the way that it is and how we actually do some of these things. Certainly, you know, room for feedback, but I think there are a lot of things that we're already doing that we could articulate better, and, and that would help the public feel more confident in our, in our outcomes. Yeah, just building on that, I, I don't think we do a great job at representing school uh, issues and interests from the council side. Personally, I just don't. This past cycle, I, you know, I was not as well informed as I need to be, as we need to be, in order to really, uh, you know, support that and, and to move through that together. And just, you know, well, so it, yeah, you can't advocate if you don't have an yeah. understanding of what the need is. So that's all part of this this whole communication loop. You took the words right off my notebook, Kate. <laughs> Great. Any other comments? Final, uh, you know, final comments here, and I want to make sure we get. Larry, you have a chance to tell us what to stop doing and do differently. I just want to know if there is a question I posed earlier, why is this different? Yeah. If you're different. Uh, and it's a point that we talked about maybe in the communications context, but how the budget conversation starts uh, through the media, that first article, <laughs> I, 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 no. yeah. is really important. That's the piece that uh, stands for six or eight weeks. Uh, because nothing's done. You know, a lot of talk, but no change. And so having that headline said, but I'm you know, told the community that all right, action has been taken, the budget meets the goal, may have had a lasting effect and produced a positive result. Yeah, so I mean, that gets back to my point, I think whatever goals we set, however we do that, if we can be there at the first read, I think that that, that does exactly, we're, okay, yeah. we're on target. Because again, the final result is materially no different than we've been for almost every year, but right. uh, in terms of budget performance um, endpoint, uh, but the reception is decided. Yeah, and I, I think, I, you know better than I do, but I also think this year it, it actually led to, I felt like talking with some of my colleagues on a one-on-one -on -one basis, they were actually more receptive to amending investments at the end than I thought they would be because we had met the goal, so to speak. So I think it, and I think Peter tried to reiterate this a couple times. I don't think Peter's saying, you know, meet the goal and then we do nothing between first and second reading. Meet the goal and actually trigger perhaps some really good conversation about how do we actually, we convince us all that these investments are, are pro, these right. additional investments are pro appropriate. Yeah, I mean, that was the intent to say here is, right. here is the goal, but these are the investments we need to make and then let the community move along with us and we can right. educate them about what those investments are. Yeah. That may or, I think the prior way we've done it, which not meeting the goal the first read, we didn't have outcomes this year. We met the goal, right. it was ugly how we got there, yeah. but it was a smoother budget process. So the real, the real challenge will be is how do we set reasonable goals yep. for all of us that we feel comfortable right. are achievable. Right. And then have those dialogues. And not to call anybody's conversation out, but a good example of that to me was that the split position the, between community service and public works. Thank you, public works. There, I there was a there was a point where I think that that might not have gone through, so to speak. I was I Peter and I had some pretty good conversations, and I wasn't a hundred percent on board of it. I thought he had some really thoughtful arguments on why it might not be necessary, and I think ultimately that went 7-0 because, because we had met the goal and, you know, and it was, it was a little bit easier to say, okay, you know, we'll do this investment. But that, to me, that would be one that would be, if, it, that, if that was in first reading, that probably would have been one of the first ones to go and never come back. That's an interesting perspective. Because I, because I, I surely at one point was like, yeah, I, 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 I don't know if this thing is absolutely necessary. So that's just one, just to give everybody a concrete example of something that, mm -hmm. that just transpired so and with that uh, there are no other uh, comments here on this last uh, segment um, Larry would you like to Give me represent the public here for a few minutes thank you. <laughs> thank you Larry Hartwell five Colby Drive um, I think the matrix needs to change the mill rate nobody 
out in the community knows what the mill rate means. When we say, oh, it's going to go, the mill rate's going to, we're going to keep the mill rate at 3%. People understand, oh, I have a budget of $1,000 and I'm spending $1,100 this year. That's a 10% increase. Dollars and percentages of increase, people understand that more than a mill rate. And now with this revaluation re going on, what's the mill rate going to mean? Nothing. It's going to be irrelevant. I mean, it, you're not going to be able to make any comparison with what the mill rate was this year. And, and and compare that to what the spending is. So I think, and I think the council in other towns they set the butt they they look at they look at not wants and needs, but they look at, at the taxpayer and it's like, how much can we increase the spending in this town? What can we support for spending? And so they will come back and say, okay. Maybe it's six percent, five percent increase in spending. Everyone understands that the school board, the public works department, community services understands what six percent is. We have two administrators, and we've had good ones in in the respective finances with the superintendent over the school department, and knowing that better than anyone else, better than the, the council or the school board. We have a town manager; he understands all the other departments as. It's been said tonight, and on many occasions, Tom brings it in at what is has been set by the uh, the uh, the council. The school superintendent could do the same thing. You'd have the marching orders at the beginning of the year. Okay, it's six percent. Um, both the town side and the school side, uh, the biggest part of the budget for both of them is, of course, employer uh, is people. And everyone's covered by a contract. They all have kind of a similar pay, uh, benefit package, and and steps and so forth. So I don't know why the school is thinks it's so much different in that respect. Um, so I think if that was set out at the beginning, uh, that would be a much better way to go for a matrix a metrics. Um, and like I say, the the council simply setting the as as Peter said uh, uh, several times. You set a goal at the beginning of the year, and you cap it. That kind of makes a lot of people in the community happy and not upset. <laughs> um, the school, okay, let's say it's 6%, and you bring it in and you say, okay, uh, we've had all these other things that have occurred. We've had increases in, in uh, enrollment, special, special services, um, asbestos has showed up and so forth. Okay, we did, we kept everything else at 6%, but we have these these things that have come along that weren't planned for, couldn't be anticipated, and then have a discussion on that. So I, I think that might, uh, those are some ideas. Um, you talked about the the uh, neighborhood meetings and the attendance being down. And it was, certainly it was down last year, it, or the previous year it was higher but still lower. I think when we had the budget the budget meeting, the one budget meeting at the high school that we had better attendance. And from everyone that sits at the table here, you only had one night of commitment as opposed to <laughs> all the different different meetings you showed up at. So um, that's what, that seemed to work as far as getting better attendance than what we've seen from the neighborhood ones the last couple, three years. So you might want to consider that again. Um, as I said, we kept uh, a stated goal was was met. Uh, it wasn't pretty. Uh, there was some, I call it sleight of hand. Tom, Tom's gonna be upset with that one, but uh, we will, we will we move things from the operating budget to the capital budget, and so then we can pull down the rate. But we've, you know, we've only moved the debt for, or the the expenditure from one pocket to the other. I think we need to do a, a better job of that. Uh, a couple th a couple years ago, uh, the school budget was, the request was cut by like a million and a half dollars or thereabouts. I remember asking Ruth after a meeting, I said, we, nothing really got cut, right, Ruth? It just moved from operating to, to CIP, and she says, yes, Larry, that's exactly right. So um, better honesty and transparency on that would, would certainly be a, a positive thing. Um, Uh, 
uh, part of the device in this, this year was um, by members of the town council. And I hear a lot of divisiveness as we, as in this community. We use that phrase a lot, but we have a, a, a lot of larger participation in this town, in town government, and in voting than in other communities. So some call it divisiveness. I, I call it democratic participation. So, and I want to thank everyone at this table. Everyone has been open this past year. Your doors have been open. You've been able, more than willing to, to uh, hear comments, criticisms, and have a, have a dialogue. And, and I appreciate that. It's a, a thankless job, and there's a gazillion hours uh, spent on it. And I look forward to, to uh, Katie serving another term. Yeah. <laughs> here, here. So with that, we ran a little bit over, but I want to thank everybody for uh, the, the work they did running up to this and uh, everyone's engagement and contributions. You know, it was a good discussion and, uh, you know, full and fair. So thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. so, we close. I just want to make sure that we don't just leave it here and that we have some concrete actions. Um, and we can talk about these offline, but the three workshops that I noted, uh, so one on long-range planning, strategic debt planning, which I think fits, sits with the town council. Um, one that's a joint finance committee workshop, which is the budget development process and goal setting. And then the other, there's a lot of things in there around communication, outreach. And so I think we should have another joint session to really figure out what resources we have available to us and, and how we can leverage those moving forward. So those are the three that I don't know if anyone else jotted out any other concrete actions or workshops. Uh, one thing we had suggested doing uh, was to somehow report out on this or, you know, if we're going to really actually try to get an earlier start on the budget season, you know, to talk about about that with, uh, you know, in a workshop prior to a town council meeting, if that is still something that would make sense, you know, and there maybe is more detail on the things that we've highlighted in terms of what we might do differently, uh, building on some of the things. But so there would be work required for us rolling up to those. But I know Tom, when you and I talked about it, we thought maybe something in, I mean, September's yeah, gonna be a I, push. I uh, think you need to do it September, October. Yeah. yeah. The, the reality is, in spite of everyone's best intentions, yeah. November's lost, yeah. December's the holidays. Uh, we just get back to business in mid-January. So I'll, I'll take it on as a, to do to make sure we get that on the calendar, that we get another round like this, you know, and we figure out how to uh, action the work that we've identified between now and then. You know, maybe that's the beginning of the official launch of the budget season. I'd like to just state that I'd be willing to do a joint workshop on goal setting in August if everyone's okay. willing to. Okay. I, I mean, I think that's... August, but I would do early September, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's... That'd be great. All right. Yeah. But I would, let me think. I think I would, my preference would be to start with the Joint Finance Committee. Yeah. Right. Um, and then bring that back yes. to the broader group. That's what I was saying. That's what I meant. Do you I'm guys sorry, agree with this? Right. Yeah. Yes. Instead of bringing, if you get too many something. voices. So you want to do a round of the Joint Finance Committees in the September. Light of elections because you can start the conversation, but you don't have to finish it till after yeah. the election. Yeah. Yeah, joint finance committees for that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, could be so we'll that. target joint finance committee uh, session in September, yeah. rolling up to uh, town council workshop sometime. You said could be after after the election. I'm just trying to think of what would be the. We would want to kick off the budget season right. before you know what's I, happening. I think the goal setting piece might be problematic. You have to set a goal now. And yeah. You'll have, you could have different people yeah. around the table. Yeah. So. Um, but there's some other things, such as budget process right. and timing, that are more kind of administrative that, right. that will, could stand the test of time. So let's like to change. Yeah, and you can start, and you can still start the conversation. You just don't have it set. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I guess I would get the metrics. And then right. I guess I would push back on that a little bit. I think if we can have homework of everybody present their own idea, just to get the conversation. So I'm not saying we have to formalize anything, but just have right. give members of the committees homework to come with your goal idea. Yeah. Good. So why don't we try to work on an agenda that we can socialize something yep. that would have detail and then, you know, be clear about the work required between now and then the September joint round. But I want to thank everybody uh, for this start and uh, that was really helpful. Don, I had heard that they might be interested in trying to convene full school board and town council in, you know, to cover some of the similar territory. I think that's challenging. 
Are we, is it possible to combine the two documents that we reviewed tonight? And yeah. To, in one composite? Sure. And we can, we can yeah. each yeah. report them out to your respective I'll take that on. We've I shared can... this with the board. Okay. I was going to give them an update anyways, but... but now I'll put it in one, one document or whatever. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. that's great. Great. And it's circulate with everybody. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thanks, great. Thanks, guys. Enjoy summer. July is coming up. This is a big